secondly, I would love to thank my committee members for their confidence in me, which makes me feel all the appreciation towards you. The novelty of my research stems from my integration of risk, a risk scorecard with a balance scorecard to form a newly managerial tool. This a newly managerial tool, which I call risk-based balance scorecard for the economic efficiency and the performance excellence. Uh, I chose I chose higher education in my dissertation because I believe that education is the chief defense of nations. The education of youth is the foundation of every country. The fastest growing segment of today's workforce is the Y generation or what we call the millennials, uh, those who were born in the mid-80s and later. When we emphasize on building the innovation leadership and entrepreneurial skills for the millennials, they, will, they can transform our economy into a knowledge-based economy so that all our problems can be solved and eventually we can change the culture of our society and they will transfer the knowledge to the next generation which will be their children. So the title of my research is Maintaining Economic Efficiency Between Innovation and Risk Management uh, for Egyptian Business Schools, a case study. If we look at it as an equation, part of the equation is innovation. We all know the balance for card for perspectives customer, financial, internal business processes, and learning and growth. In education and learning, in our educational system, we call learning and growth as innovation and learning. So if you are a university or a school and you want to innovate in hiring new quality faculty or you want, for example, to innovate in allocating budget for enriching the campus environment or you want to innovate in a new course curricular design, all these innovations comes with risks. And if you do not manage risks, you're gonna fail. Just like the 2008 financial crisis organization when they failed, although they were implementing the balance scorecard, because it appeared that basically the balance scorecard is missing a crucial piece, which is risk management. So if we put risk management into the equation, will create the balance, it will maintain the creative tension between innovation and risk management and enhance the economic efficiency. Again, from the title, you will know that my research dissertation is composed of three researches. First research is the economic efficiency. Uh, I use a quantitative tool called the data envelope analysis uh, for evaluating the, I did it on a macro level for evaluating all the 17 state universities. Uh, the, second, uh, the second research and the third research concerns the qualitative case study analysis, which, uh, which is an exploratory study. Uh, and I used in this exploratory study uh, triangulation process in order to, to ensure the validity and the reliability of my research. So the second research is the balance for card, and the third research is the enterprise risk management. Then I combined and I integrated all the three researches together, combining the macro and the micro analysis all together to form, to reach the risk-based balance, the prototype risk-based balance for card methodology system for performance, uh, excellence, and economic efficiency. So if we go to the background, okay. the background, since the 1960s, uh, there has been a decline in our educational system. Mona and Laila Barari said that although we have an educational reform, in uh, 1999, yet the outcomes are not yet satisfactory and we need more reform. So the statement of the problem is said by Professor Kaplan himself in 2010. He said there is a missing crucial piece 
and I believe that my current thinking is we need a parallel scorecard which is risk scorecard. So risk management was siloed, and by the way, it is still siloed. It is considered as a compliance tool uh, issue and not a strategic issue. I treated it and I linked it to the strategy. So the purpose of the research is to demonstrate through a case study how to integrate the data increment analysis results with the case study results in order to determine core competences of the school, key success factors, KPIs, KRIs, KRIs is a key risk indicator. Through, I, 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 I made, I, I developed self-evaluation procedures. This self-evaluation procedure is not only for any, it's for every school and every university to determine, to self-assess its performance in order to know the, the, the efficiency. So uh, there have been many researches, 20 years ago since the balance scorecard, for balance scorecard, many articles and many researches, but very few implementing this balance scorecard in business school or in universities in general, and very few determining the core competence. And there are scarcely, there aren't any research linking the KRIs with the KPIs. So, firstly, this research has used the quant quantitative tool. The quantitative tool is a powerful tool, I found, that the, uh, it's called the data envelope analysis. And this uh, tool is used extensively, not just for business school, but for hospitals, for different kinds of organizations. How it is powerful? It is powerful because you don't have, you don't need only, you need the technological software and the decision making unit you are comparing with and multiple inputs and outputs. You don't need weights. It's a uh, non-parametric linear program. Okay? The inputs are used for the, uh, for the education. First input is the number of equivalent faculty. Second input is the ratio of the number of uh, uh, faculty to the number of students. Third input is the final budget. And the most important output is the number of students enrolled in postgraduate studies. I did it on a macro level of all the states or what we call the public universities. Then uh, I used the School of Business Qualitative Study. As I said, I have used triangulation process, meaning that I have used field analysis, field observations, and uh, open-ended questionnaires, document analysis. Finally, I arrived, I combined the data input analysis results with the school of business, the micro-analysis. The research questions, first research question is, uh, um, how can the risk-based balance scorecard boost the economic efficiency of business schools in Egypt. There were some questions. How can we use a data input analysis? What is the importance of enterprise risk management? Uh, how does a business school use risk based to enhance its competitive advantage? And how does a business school link data input analysis to the risk based balance scorecard? And what kind of strategy is more competitive, is, is more appropriate in the competitive environment? Is it economic advantage or service differentiation? And what are the relationships and cause and effects among the core competences and key success factors within the risk-based balance scorecard? What are the relationships between risk-based balance scorecard and the school economic efficiency? Of course, like any research, there were limitations. My limitations, my case study is on a school of business. I have, I chose uh, the school of business of the AC. But the macro, on the macro level, I did the data input analysis on all the state universities, the public school, which in, includes the schools of business. Uh, there were difficulty in having a secondary data of only business schools. Okay, uh, and the second limitation, I cannot combine public and private and compare them, compare them together as a decision-making unit because they differ. Public universities, universities rely on funds, while private universities rely on high tuitions and endowments. So for the sake of a fair comparison, I limited 
to the public universities. Also, uh, if any decision making unit change, the result will change. And uh, I limited my research as a case study to only one case study. I could not make a holistic and multiple case studies because of the difficulties and the time, of, time limitation of the research. So what are the methodology? First, I will do, I have used mix of methodology, quantitative and qualitative. The quantitative, which is a data input analysis, I have done it on a macro level, as I said. And the uh, case study is a micro analysis, uh, specifically designed for the business school, the school of business, as they call it, they call it the school of business, SOB, uh, of uh, the AUC. The findings. I found the findings are very interesting. First, I will address the solutions of the data envelope analysis application. Second, the discoveries of the case studies. Then, I will present the contribution of the risk-based balance for CAR to the school performance, innovation, and efficiency. So, for the data envelope analysis, I have used two models. One model was, was the first one to be developed in 1978, which is the CCR. And the second model is the VCC. The CCR is based on a constant return to scale. The VCC is based on a variable return to scale. So what was the results? For the CCR, I found that there are 14, 14 relatively inefficient universities, uh, as you can see, and the rest of the 17 are relatively efficient. And I, I was very happy that I found that Alexandria University is relatively efficient. And also, the same happens with the BCC, but with different, some small different, different results, is that I found 12 relatively inefficient universities instead of the 14 relatively inefficient. And of course, I arrived that you have 20% room for improvement. Meaning, the relatively inefficient universities, they can either decrease their input to have the same uh, output they are having, or by using the same inputs they are having, they have to increase the output to be efficient like the rest of the relatively efficient universities. And the most uh, uh, interesting thing I found about data envelope analysis is that it has reference sets. What does the reference set? It indicates the best uh, practice universities and they act as a role model for the other universities. So for the CCR, the reference sets were for Tanta and South Valley. For the BCC, the reference sets were for South Valley and Tafishi, which means that uh, South, Val South Valley uh, is considered, can be considered as a benchmark for the rest of the universities. Uh, the, the research then suggested that the data envelope analysis could be linked with the case study analysis. What about the case study discoveries? Of course, there is a, a lack of a risk-based balance for fraud, not just in higher education, Worldwide. In the AUC, although it is at the AUC, yet they, they don't have the balance scorecard implemented with its four perspectives. But they have KPIs they have developed for themselves, and their strategy process is an iterative process. But they, they were very anxious that I'm going to develop for them this risk based balance scorecard, especially the risk they were very interested at this time that risk is very important to consider and to manage. I found five gaps. Gap of e-learning, gap of process and productivity, gap of implementing budget system, gap of customer service, and gap of clear mission, vision, objectives. And this is the visualization tool. You can see the dotted line is a gap. Therefore, a risk-based balance scorecard worksheets, which I developed, it is six pages table having the key success factors, score competences, KPIs, KRIs, to be cascaded down throughout the departments and offices of the School of Business. And then I developed another table, table 5.2. It is a two-pages table, 
uh, um, I combine the data analysis results with the KPI code competences and benchmarks. Then, in order to be a strategy-focused organization, you translate the strategy to operation terms, align the organization to the strategy, make strategy everyone's job, and make the strategy an iterative pro uh, process and mobilize change. This is a strategy map I developed for the School of Business. It is very important uh, for the stakeholders in order to visualize the cause and effect relationships among the four perspectives. And this is the risk scorecard I developed for the School of Business. And as you can see, it is composed of five risk zones. The yellow one is the intermediate one. If you look at the higher level, like competition for qualified faculty, I think every university is, is, uh, is, is a, it's an issue for every university. And the most risky one is the economy affecting the school performance. Uh, and this is the last table in chapter six. I connected the school of business strategies with the risk based four perspectives. And this is a self-evaluation that any university can assess uh, the performance and economic efficiency. You organize the committee and uh, you may form the regulation and do the planning and organize the team and frame the evaluation according to risk-based balance scorecard to be cascaded to the two uh, academic ad administration and evaluate your if, it, you, if you're relatively efficient or not through the data input analysis to have the school planning, long-term planning, and reward system. So what are the recommendations? For the Minister of Higher Education first, for the new minister in the, in the new government, I, I think they should play a counseling role instead of a supervising role. Because every university needs to have a level of empowerment. And through the self-evaluation procedure, they can put for themselves their strategy and evaluate yourself, themselves. For the School of Business, of course, to follow up with the conclusion I have made for them. And uh, they could attract my, uh, evaluate the, the faculty according to the quality and not the nationality. And, of course, follow with the KPIs and the KRIs I developed and use the data input analysis because the AC School of Business have uh, partnerships with different universities and schools so they can obtain the very easy secondary data and evaluate and themselves. So, um, for other schools of business. Other schools of business, although they differ in mission, vision, and strategy, yet this prototype, this space balance for card, can be implemented for them. And not just for schools of business, but for all universities, for all the higher education. A future study. I have used data envelope analysis application uh, as a static one because it was limited to only one year, 2009, 2010. But there are other models like window analysis and multi kist in, index. Uh, you can have the trend throughout the years. It's a dynamic one. So I recommend this. And also uh, to continue and follow up with the case study and uh, further include all opinions of different stakeholders. I only interviewed staff and faculty. But you, could, you can include students, parents, alumni, business partners. And of course, multiple case study application is preferable. And uh, have other different research methodology. I, want, I found a very interesting application. Uh, it was developed for iPad. I will come and show you because I don't have the connector for each one of you. Uh, the importance of this iPad application was developed in March 29, 2012. It is for all organizations, not, not just business schools, because it's very easy that you can plan, but the execution is the most difficult. The, the most important thing, as you can see, here is the model. Have all your contacts of your organizations on this application. 
example, this objective is increased faculty quality goals. And, and you have here the KPI and the KRI. If you open the KPI, for example, you want to follow up, who's responsible? You open. It exists. Uh, I made it here, but I, 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 I took like this screenshots. But you didn't use it. Did you use this? You didn't use it. It is an execution plan. Thank you, Dr. Samir, for, for everything and for supervising me. Without you, I couldn't have done it.